Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina, and this is Chalk Paint 101, Episode 6. Got some fantastic questions, and I am looking forward to sharing some of this with you. And let's get started. Painting with drawers inside or out. I get this question all the time in random to any of my videos that I have on Saturday when I'm painting a piece and demonstrating a decorative finish. Why am I leaving my drawers in while I do it? But the question pertains to, if you watch all my videos, I try to give little details that I can't give on each video. What I do to the back of a piece, what I do to clean it, what I do for the drawers, if I'm restoring them, if I'm salvaging the wood color, am I having to paint it because I can't um, salvage the wood because of the stain factor that's in there. So the, the question kind of is a bit varied. So I think what was going on with this question in specific is why would I not take all my drawers out and paint them and then paint the frame? Um, and this is obviously pertaining more to dressers with drawers in them. The thing is, is nine times out of 10, I actually do take the drawers out, but there's a lot of li little segments in my videos that I actually have to take out. For the YouTube platform, I'm trying to make videos that are under 20 minutes and they favor videos that are seven minutes to maybe 16 minutes max. And sometimes it gets difficult to show you a lot of the little details that um, is done to a piece. So I try to focus my videos on the actual technique regarding the paint and the decorative finish more than I am about the entire piece from A to Z. But going back, if you go through all my videos, I actually do give segments in random videos what I do to drawers, where I paint, the whole outline, how I paint the frame, and then painting drawers. Where it boils down to, it depends on the finish. If I'm gonna paint a piece of furniture and it's just gonna be one color and that's it, it may be advantageous just to take the drawers out, paint those, paint your frames, paint the frames separately. So in that regards, it's it may be a good thing to take the drawers out, but if you're painting a dresser with a certain finish and you're using a certain type of blending, you're using certain colors, you kind of want sometimes anyway, sometimes you want your frame to go in that design. So it has to be set up like a canvas. It has to be all together. You can't separate it out. But that certainly doesn't mean that you can't take the drawers out, still finish off your frames, as well as the frame inside um, where the drawer is. Hope that makes sense. So however you want to do your finish and however you want to actually paint it is completely your per prerogative. But at the same time, a lot of the uh, furniture tutorials, most of them anyway, what they're doing is they're trying to show you a decorative finish and the frame of a dresser as well as the drawer itself has to be together in order for the finish to be complete. So if you're still in question to what do I do with the frame or inside that frame is it certainly doesn't mean that the person or myself who's painting it still doesn't take it out and do that. A lot of these little things sometimes are just not necessarily in these videos because most people are trying to keep the videos short, sweet, and to the point about the decorative finish. 
But if you are just painting one color and you want to show all the little details on what you're doing to prep and finish with a piece, you know, they are out there. But I do show them in segments in some of my videos, but it would just be too much. My videos would be way too long if I showed you all those little fine details in what I do from A to Z. Another great question I got is salt wash for edges for drawers and door frames. Is this something that I do? Is it something that's okay to do? So I have actually made a few comments in my videos regarding that the frame, so I'm just using this in the back. So this piece right here, this piece right here, or the actual frame right here. I am very, very sparing when it comes to the texture medium of salt wash to be applied here because it is a, a thick texture. It's great as far as playing and, and, and creating the, deck, the, the texture medium on the, on the front, but for the sides, you definitely want to be a thinner, definitely thinner about it. Um, the other thing that I will do, depending how thick I'm playing with that salt wash, is I will use the base chalk paint color and go back and do those frames and edges separately just with the chalk paint. Because you don't see it unless you actually pull it out. But to make the overall design and finish work together and be unified, I will still use the same color. So no, you don't want to build up too much salt wash uh, around your edges and frames of whatever furniture piece that you're using. So that's a really good question. Um, can I use an IOD uh, transfer if I've used salt wash? What I've demonstrated through several of my videos on Saturday is the different ways you can play with salt wash. And what it always boils down to is you can make salt wash super, super thick. So it's really, really thick and you can create a lot of high and low points with that salt wash texture. What I've tried to show is you don't have to always do that. You can just apply a little bit of salt wash just to give a texture, but it's nothing too strong. It's not over dominated. So in that regards, if your salt wash mix is super thick, I recommend to put your IOD transfers on your furniture pieces or your decor pieces first, and then you can use your salt wash mix around that on the outside if you're doing something really thick. If it's thin enough, you shouldn't have a problem. I've done it. I've put it uh, a transfer on a piece. Um, I think it was that Verdegree um, tutorial I did a few weeks ago. I already had a base of uh, gray with a salt wash, but the salt wash mix that I made was not that thick. So when I put the IOD transfer on it, I the adhesion was no problem. But if it was super thick, it would it would be a problem. So you kind of have to, you know, make that analogy on, on how thick it is. So if you've made something super thick and now you've decided that you'd like to go ahead and kind of implement the IOD design into your piece now, I just recommend taking some sandpaper and just buff it down and use a very, very fine grit and, and until you've got just enough smoothness that, you know, by the touch, there's not too much texture, then go ahead and apply your transfer. So you, it doesn't mean that you've totally wrecked the idea of putting an IOD transfer there. You just got to improvise based on what's going on and when you decided to implement. But if you already know ahead of time, you're good to go. Just know that the salt wash mix has to be somewhat thin or applied before your salt wash uh, texture. Another easy technique with chalk paint for beginners. So I had mentioned in a previous Chalk Paint 101, uh, the number one that I would pick is the ragging technique. So another really good, easy um, chalk painting technique that I recommend 
is just do a color wash. Don't worry about the tools and etc. Is apply a base color that you really like and you can use a highlight color or a low light color. Usually the mainstream would be a white or a gray or you could do a black or a really dark gray wash. So the wash will be 50% paint, 50% water, and you can always play around with that ratio. So if you want it to be more translucent, then you would just make more water to paint and vice versa if you want it to be a little bit more concentrated and show up a little bit stronger. But the color wash, I would definitely recommend for a new chalk painter to really play around with the, with the paints and what they can do um, and help you understand your perimeters with the chalk paint, what you can do with the water and what you can. So color wash would be my next big choice for a new beginner uh, with chalk paint. The other one that I would also recommend too is taking clear wax and mixing a little bit of paint. So let's say you put maybe two teaspoons of clear wax and then you're going to take about half a teaspoon of whatever color you would like and playing around with the wax colors on top of making your own custom waxes. So playing with the colors, this will also help you as a beginner to play around with different color shades, but still have the control of pulling it back as much as you as you wish. So you have a base going on your project. You now are going to make the custom color wax, which is clear wax, just a little tiny bit of the paint. Play around with your colors. Play around with contrast colors and see how you're liking it. And you can play with the different tones. And if you don't like something that you've, you've tried, you can always take the clear wax and it's going to act as an eraser. So definitely playing with custom um, wax colors is a fantastic way for a beginner to get more association to playing with the colors and playing with the products associated with chalk paint. So that would be a really good one. Another really, really great question, and there's no right and wrong answer with this, is real fiber or a real haired brush, so um, a natural hair brush, paintbrush, versus a synthetic, which I don't have one here as an example, but a synthetic uh, bristles. So it's real bristle, um, real bristle versus synthetic. So which one's better? There, that's not really, there, one is not necessarily better than the other, it's just both of them have um, key points, I suppose, that can be um, helpful depending on the project that you're doing. These um, real haired brushes, these are usually like a boar hair. I think there's a couple of other style, uh, hairs that they'll use, but boar is um, a, a really, really thick, thick hair, um, real paintbrush. And what's really, really um, beneficial with these is you can paint very quickly with real hair brushes. So it's speed in which you can, you know, do your project is a big one. It holds a lot of paint, so you don't have to keep dipping. And they do wash up really well. So using really warm water and washing these a lot, you definitely get your money's worth with the real hair. These are not the greatest, not that you can't, but they're not what I would call the best brush if you're looking for precision painting. So if you're looking for a slick, really smooth finish, I definitely would recommend a synthetic brush as they're, they've been designed for precision finishes and especially certain cuts and cuts and corners and things like that, they are really, really good for that kind of thing. They do maintain their shape really well because it's synthetic. Um, whereas these, you know, over time they, they, 
they start to lose a little bit because the hair starts to wear down, right? Because it's real. These are generally also a little bit more expensive, the real natural bristle versus the synthetic bristles. So, but if you're, you know, really kind of venturing into chalk painting, even as a hobby, I recommend actually having both. I really do because both will be really helpful depending on what you're working on. So sometimes you really want, especially for insides, you want a nice smooth finish. I've always used a synthetic brush more times than I do a natural one. So again, I think the biggest components I can say is that these are great because you really want to get an all over finish. These are great for color washes. Um, they both have really good points and I think it's super, super advantageous to have both on hand. Um, even if you're painting walls, it's actually very, very helpful because these hold a lot of paint, but then with your synthetic brushes, you can go back if you're really looking for ultra smooth finish. So you can get smooth finishes with these. I think you just have to play with it a little bit more. So it's gonna be a little bit quicker with a synthetic brush. These are really, the natural bristles as well, are, they're kind of steered towards the natural paints. So if you're using chalk paints, milk paints, maybe even clay-based paints, the, um, the real hairs, bristles, are probably a bigger advantage for you as well. And then the synthetic ones are great for like acrylic paints, things like that, or uh, certain types of top coat finishes. I really recommend using a synthetic brush. So anyway, I hope that helps. But as far as decorative finishes, um, I generally will go with the real hair brushes. But, you know, again, a lot of things is if you're starting out, just use what you have. It's not going to make and break a big significance of your projects. But as you get more and more into details and as you get more and more into doing it more, it may be, you know, a huge advantage point to spending a few dollars and getting a really good quality um, real hair brush as well as synthetic brushes. So definitely, I hope that helps. Yeah, guys, I am so excited because I want to show you guys how to paint with a trowel. And I have ordered the uh, Venetian plaster. So I've got a few projects that I want to do this on as well as my staging area. I want to do a Venetian plaster finish and I really want to give it a really funky old nostalgic look with that. So I'm kind of excited to share that with you as well as my gesso. I still have that. I got a little deviated, but that's okay. It's still there. I have everything, so I don't have to wait for things to come in. Um, <clears throat> and this Saturday, I am super excited because this lamp right beside me is still drying. I painted it and it's not crusty. It's super soft to the touch. So the lampshade was not to my liking and I thought I was going to put just a whole new fabric on it. And then I got restless with time and I'm like, oh, I don't have enough time to do this. So I decided to paint it and I'm super happy I did because it turned out fantastic. It's still drying and so is the, the base of this. And I can't wait to show you what I did. But my good friend Daniel and I decided that we wanted to do a challenge together. So we decided to make a thrift shop challenge. So we both bought um, three items. Had to be under $30. And we're going to show you all the details of our thrift shop finds. And it's all going to be on this Saturday's tutorial. So definitely check that out. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. But it is so amazing what you could find for next to nothing and throw some chalk paint decorative ideas onto it. And voila, you know, sky's the limits. I actually have a few guests that I'm going to be bringing to Chalk Paint 101. So 
please, if you have questions based on your chalk paint projects, uh, whether it be for furniture or for home decor, please leave me a comment in the comment box below. It really means a lot. I really want you guys to be successful. It's what this whole channel is about. It's not how fast this channel grows. It's about how successful I can make people become with what they're looking to do with their chalk paint projects. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode, and I'm going to see you next week for Chuck Paint Session 7. And also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you're new to my channel, I always have a decorative finish, a hands-on project for Saturdays, and they're uploaded every single Saturday, so lots of fun things. I have over 100 videos on my channel now showing you a really good broad range of all kinds of fun things that you can do with chalk paints and chalk paint decorative finishes. So I'm going to see you next Wednesday, and don't forget to check out this Saturday's tutorial, and we're going to see you soon. Thanks so much for stopping by.